Hello, hey, and ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and welcome to See If It Sticks. Uh, we, this is the podcast that usually solves your first world problems, your, your submitted first world problems. But this week is our Christmas special. Um, and this year, the Christmas sh- special is going to be affectionately titled um, The See If It Sticks Guide to Christmas 2017. Um, I know people have been waiting to hear this. Uh, I know which magazine have released their guide to Christmas. Um, Good housekeeping, and uh, now the <laughs> the third titan of the uh, home economic world yes. is finally weighing in and see if it sticks. I won the case. Fuck Martin Lewis. That's where you need to be. Oh yeah, Martin Lewis did him as well, but he's the fourth one. He's just out of the top three. Yeah, he's just out of the top flight, really. Uh, I am Dan. I'm Dom, and I'm Ross, and welcome. Hello. Oh, oh. Let's get Christmassy. Da, 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 da. Shh, we get sued. Oh yes. Well, it was only, it's less than thirty seconds, so we're all right. I don't think that's the oh, case that's anymore. Not is the it? case here. No. no, I think it's in the US that that's the case. Yeah. Oh, is that right? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. I don't think we get any. Yeah, that remember case? when we stole that? Remember when we were in a band and we stole that clip from that film? Don't I don't know. think that was legal. Don't know what you're talking about, mate. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, what what band? What band? What what clip? Don't know. Yeah, when Dom and Ross were in that band. <laughs> I was never in a band. Actually, I think the legal advice I got from that was you can use it as long as you're not ripping the shit out of it. They generally won't bother coming after you. I think oh. was the advice we got in the end. Because so I, like, I, okay, I thought that parody and was fine. I thought you could do a parody, but like a Weird Al Yankovic. Yo, uh, yeah, no, I think that's fine. La, la, but I think la, if, we, la, if we had that and then we were going, look at that piece of shit. What a fucking piece of shit that is. Uh, that quote's a fucking load of shit. So but that, it's sort know, of, I think it was uh, sort of accoutrement yeah. enhancement to the song. It was, yeah. The song yeah. would not have been as good without it. Maybe not. The song wasn't good in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise for my voice this week. I've lost my voice a little bit. That's okay. I went out on Friday with friend of the show, Stuart Porro, and they were doing karaoke at a local bar. Oh. And we uh, sang Love Gun by Kiss. And I may have went... Slightly too high. Oh. <laughs> well, as, set, oh, as always, uh, thanks for the invite. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> it was a spur of moment thing that turned into... Oh, right, yeah. And I don't have a fucking mobile telephone that people can get hold of me on spur of the moment. Do you? No, I don't have one either. No. No. Well, know, it I certainly see. doesn't ring anyway. No, well... It obviously doesn't work. <laughs> oh, stop making me feel guilty. <laughs> selfish. Selfish. What day was selfish. this, Tom? Huh? What day was this? It was Friday. I was free as well. I was well. off Friday. Were you fri- free Friday? Yeah, yeah. I thought you were only free on Mondays and Thursdays. Not over the Christmas period, mate. Oh, right. My always, last bit of work was Thursday night. Friday, always, we're free always, as a bird. Always time for festivities. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I apologise. Well, well, I suppose it begs the question, Ross. Why weren't we hanging out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and you were sitting at home, miserable. Yeah. Um, I was looking out at the rain. Yeah. Thinking, I wish someone would. Uh, well, I was hoping you would call Dan. I was looking at my phone every now and again. Dan hasn't texted me yet. I was I was looking at local karaoke nights and, and wondering which one would I would look less least sad at going yeah. down there by myself. But it's lucky I didn't really. Well, if you had gone down to a local karaoke night, you would have been pleasantly surprised. Would you? Would you? Um, if 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 you if that actually happened, right? So say um, Ross and I spur of the moment went out, didn't invite you, right? And you were sitting at home lonely, um, and thought, well, you know what? Cheers me up karaoke i'm gonna go down to this karaoke bar yeah right? and you go walk in there by yourself you've come to the pub by yourself yeah. and you walk in and you see me and ross there do you stay do you duet do you stay and do the karaoke and just pass it off and hope no one questions why you've come down to the pub by yourself or do you walk straight back out the door and go no i can't do this you'd come and join I, I, wouldn't you i'd stay yeah you, you, know you, I would. you know yeah. i would i wouldn't you know I, I would i would go in there and be like oh hello guys thanks for the invite and then go get a drink that's, that's, and then crack out some kiss. That's and then too, crack out some kiss. That's too awkward for me. I can't hack it. I wouldn't be able to hack See, it. See, it would be more awkward for me to leave because afterwards I would destroy myself inside for leaving. I would destroy myself inside if, if, if I if if that if it was the other way around. I would really, feel, I would feel better walking home. I would just stop at stop at a pub on the way so that I don't look really sad walking in the front door. Like you went out for very long with the with the yin and the yang with the yin to each other's yang then. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Maybe that's why the phone ain't ringing. Oh, fuck (laughs) off. Oh, you got it on silent. 
Yeah, so you got it silent. It's on me though. Yeah. I like the new buzz of the new iPhone. Look at that. Look at beep, 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 beep. Isn't it? It's like a Morse Cody buzz now. Oh, is, is this the iPhone 8, is it? Uh, no, 7. 7. Yeah, rather than the... Oh, I've, I've never really noticed it. Yeah, it's got a different buzz. Uh, okay. When you get a text, it goes... I probably, I probably can't differentiate between the um, the vibration patterns when it's up my bum. No. <laughs> You'd imagine that would be more sensitive. Yeah. Right. Have you ever gotten the phantom phone syndrome in your I've, yeah, loads, leg? All loads. Times. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's an odd, odd thing, isn't it? I was without a phone for about three days when I smashed this one up. Jesus. And I could still feel it going off. Yeah. Blimey. I get it a lot in my left butt cheek. Your left butt cheek. Mm, that's where I keep it. Got a little holster. He's got a pouch in his yeah. bum cheek. Ooh, yeah, like, blimey. Like a kangaroo. It's probably all the years of radiation that's made my butt muscles twitch. Oh, don't. They were talking about that on the radio today. Oh, is it bad bringing, again? Bringing up this tumours and phones thing. Th- yeah. Thigh tumours. Uh, well, the good thing is no one talks on them anymore. That was their biggest concern, wasn't it? What, keeping People them to your had them at the, Yeah, now at least they're at arm's length. See, that's texting. all I do, though, Ross. I talk on mine. You know, I yeah. never text back to anyone. Brain tumours are hoy. Really? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna fool me. What? <laughs> Gonna fool me. You said you talk on yours all the time, and he said, Oh, uh, right. Yeah. I see. I thought you were talking about the texting thing. I, like, I definitely don't text. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we uh, kick Christmas off? Yeah. Yes. He wants to, he wants to, to head, head in first. He I think you should go in. first, Dan. <laughs> well, no, Dom's, Dom's, Dom's done some prep. Yeah. I've done some prep. I've, I've got done little... some prep. I don't know if it's right. But yeah. I've done some prep. Oh, well, I think that's even better. We should start with Ross's then. No, I was here with the... Um, I wasn't here for the meeting. You two had a meeting last week, didn't you? When I was well, working I, late. I, I explained it in about as much depth as we um, went into in the meeting. Yeah. Yes. The old, While uh, sitting in so my room. Four words and an image. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. That's pretty much how any of our ideas start. Yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, I've prepped for that. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. I've got some of what you've prepped as well. Only two things of what you've prepped. And then I've got other bits. Okay. Well, you go first if you've got more than me. Well, I'll do my first couple of bits, yeah. then you can go on to your bits, and then I'll come back around later after Dan's yeah, done okay. what he's done. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Does that sound good? A look behind the curtain here, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, at Christmas. It. So, what we're Don't gonna, tell us we don't you're gonna, anything. You're going to mention something, and then we're going to talk about it for a while, or are you just... Yeah, we just can talk smashing, about it. Are yeah, we just no, smashing out ideas here? No, we're just... Uh, we're, well, we're, we'll riff. Yeah, we can, we can... We'll do what we always do. We can, we can go for it. Go for Let's it. Let's dive straight in. So here I've got... This is, something, this is something I found earlier while searching for interesting Christmas gifts. We've probably got exactly the same stuff, Dom. Well, <laughs> this is uh, from a brand called Accoutrements, and it's an emergency Santa kit, right? Right, okay. So it comes in a tin. You right. open up the tin. It's an inflatable Santa beard and hat. Right, okay. Why, so, does, why does that need to come in a tin? Because it's an emergency one, so you just like, bomb. You can carry it around oh, with right. you does anywhere. It, does it like explode out? It sort of basically explodes Like a life out. raft. Like a life raft. Okay, no, I can dig that. Yeah, so you open it up. It's like, you know, the old bouncy snakes out the can. Yeah. Opens it up. Bish, bash, bosh. You've got your Santa beard and your hat, just in case you need to bring some Christmas cheer. Why is it called accoutrement? I don't know. It's just I think that's the brand, accoutrements. Okay. I like the name. It's their emergency Santa kit. Is that so if a kid comes running out crying that Santa has been cancelled for their birthday party or Christmas party? Or Dad quickly runs into the kitchen, yeah. throws on a red coat. Yeah. Well, you see, they, um, there was a, a Santa's Grotto uh, somewhere in the UK today where they, have, they closed down because there were so many. Uh, it was a, a winter wonderland type event that was closed down today because they've had so many complaints about the poor quality. Uh, parents were complaining. Drunk Santa, was it? Parents were complaining that the Santa in the Santa's Grotto... His, his fake beard didn't even have a hole cut out of it, so he couldn't talk to the kids. So he was pulling down his beard to talk to the children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's some quick thinking, though, I'd right? sip from his hip flask, probably. Yeah. So that's here's, probably why it had no hole in it. It's probably, the beard was probably full of some kind of alcoholic beverage. So here's just a brief description of the product. So it's instant Christmas spirit in a tin. Like Dan's jumper. Pop the vinyl beard and Santa hat on your head and before you know it, everyone is going to be sitting on your lap laughing and asking for presents. Oh, I see. There had to be some seedy reason that Don wanted this. Yes. It gets people to sit on my lap. And you know how children. much I love that. <laughs> Not children. <laughs> and it mentions twice in the product description at the top for some reason, 
Beard is 10 inches long and includes elastic lips to li- loops to go around your ears. Beard is 10 inches long and includes elastic loops to go around your ears. Maybe it's like a subtitle and a description, but they're both the same thing. Yeah, it yeah. just mentioned it twice, which I found very interesting. So there you go. Awesome. Now, if people were looking for something they wanted to get me this year... You found something for yourself. I found something for myself. You don't want the fake beard? No, I don't want the fake beard. I've had too much lap sitting this Christmas already. Got a real beard. I'm still fronting the campaign for Dom to next year be a re- what what's called a real Santa. We should do it and then document it. So we should go along oh, with the film we should crew make a documentary and like about it. making I'll see Santa. If it sticks documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah if it yeah. sticks presents real Santa. I would I would love that because yeah because we just yeah if you're walking out going fucking little shits. We'll bleach we'll bleach your beard and your hair. Okay. And your eyebrows. That's going to go down well in my new job, isn't it? Well, then you're just you can like, just tell me you had a traumatic experience. Well, yeah. they're not. They're hardly going to turn around to you and go, "You're fired because you look like Santa." <laughs> if anything, you're going to fill you're going to fill them with joy. Yeah. Anyway, that's coming up next year. <laughs> but firstly, 2018. Was, 2018. Soon. Don becomes Santa. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the headlines? Man fired for looking like Santa. It would. It would cause a PR absolute, nightmare. It would be a be media, a funeral. Be a media storm. Yeah, quick way to make some cash, Dom. <laughs> it would be yeah. if yeah. I ever do get. Maybe fired. we should. Maybe so we should not make, only do you have a job, you're also getting paid to be Santa, and then you've got a nice legal case. Maybe we should expedite it to this year so we can all share in this wealth. <laughs> mm. So, this is called a beard buddy shaving apron. He's very beard orientated. You know, it's it's well, nice. I thought I'm the. I've got a big old beard. Beard gifts. <laughs> beard gifts. For the beardy man in your well, life. Beards are very popular at the moment. Are uh, they still yeah. popular? I see you're, you've shaved yours off. Uh, last. But until I shaved it off, which was only two days ago, it was quite bushy and big. It was probably the biggest I ever had it. Just to, um, Not to, like that, to but, let the listeners know that Ross, having shaved two days ago, I say he shaved his beard off. It's currently at a maybe three or four inches long. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's what we call a uh, three in the morning it's, shadow. It's three or four inches uh, away from his belly button. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it comes back. Quick. Looks like a member of Primus right it's now. It's just getting a little bit greyer every time I shave it. Yeah, I mm. shaved mine two months ago. <laughs> and now there's a millimetre of growth. On so, two hairs. Yes. This is a beard buddy shaving apron. So if I show you the picture... So if I describe oh, it to the folks to the, at home, yeah, that's it. it's a good idea. So it basically goes around your neck like a regular hairdresser's apron. Okay. But it attaches to the mirror in front of you to create some sort of uh, shaving hammock, nice. which so catches your uh, catches your trimmings. Good idea. It's um, very good because it's very mucky. Could just use a sink. Saving a bit bad. But the thing is, it's clear, clearing up after that. It's always a faff. Is it? It's clearing up the sink, especially if you've got... A long, long whiskers like myself, and you're cutting it right down. Yeah, it's like being at the hairdressers. You Especially, have to get, yeah, you have you to probably, get a dustpan and brush. Probably out. can't flush those down the drain, can you? I, I, can, I can, I can just, I can knock my shaver out in the sink. I oh, see. Now I'm probably controversial here, but I shave into the sink, scoop it out of the sink, throw it down the loo, and then flush it. All right. Yeah. Probably well, that's one way. Bin, really. Why don't you just throw yeah. your shave it over the toilet? I could do my head down the toilet. Yeah. And have a shave. Yeah. But there's no mirror. I, I think this is a more toilet. novel way of doing it. Ironically, no mirror facing up from my toilet as I'm looking down it. Well, mm. how else do you get a good look at your rectum while you're <laughs> pooing? For to, oh, to, uh, that would be graphic. To aid digestive health. The one thing I've never seen is my self-poop. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you should take a video. That's an experience I've never had with myself. Or maybe myself you should poop. put some of those raspberry pies to good use. I've seen myself poo. Have you? Yeah. With a mirror or a camera or... Oh, I went to a uh, you know court an, case, an experience. <laughs> One of those, you know, you get those experience packages for Christmas. It's like you can. I got drive, to drive a Porsche. You can you? Drive, drive a race car. You can do indoor skydiving. You can go zorbing, or you can poop on a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen inside my colon <laughs> when, I, colonoscopy. when I had a when I had a colonoscopy. I bet that's interesting. They kept me awake. Yeah, um, they, but they, they forced you. him awake. It was like yeah. it was like a clockwork orange. <laughs> you look say- upon your field. <laughs> <laughs> the metal things holding his eye open. <laughs> no, I was pretty high because they'd sedated me. Because yeah. obviously, <laughs> having try- a camera shoved up your bum isn't a pleasant experience. It was try- they were trying to. It was um, aversion therapy. They were trying to stop Dom from farting so much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, and I was sort of looking, and I went. What's inside my bum? And the nurse just went, yes, yes, it is. You know, that sort of condescending nurse you're coming awake from uh, yeah, being yeah. on dope talking, voice. Talking crap again. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, it was an interesting situation seeing the inside of yourself and also feeling the slight discomfort of the thing inside of yourself. Good, uh, good, fe- good, interesting feeling or bad, interesting feeling. It was an, it was a, it was an interesting, weird feeling. It's not happened to me, but my my dad has to have them quite regularly because it runs in our family. So I'm sure I'm going to have to have one at some point. Mm. Uh, we're talking about colonoscopies. We're talking about pooping on mirrors. Uh, <laughs> the pooping on mirrors is a family tradition. Yeah, that's right. A Gilbert he family has, tradition since has, the 1800s. He has a poo on the mirror quite frequently. <laughs> it's a family tradition. <laughs> <laughs> On the anyway. 12th of October every year, <laughs> we have to poop on a mirror. Uh, so those are my beardy Christmas gifts for yeah, this year. Yeah. That's, the, that's the picks for the bearded gentleman. That's the picks for the bearded gentleman. Now, I believe Ross has some picks for the general reader. As Dom is most known for his uh, beardiness. We've got more a, beard picks. This, this is a willy care kit. A right. willy <laughs> care kit? Yes, for the man who t- needs to take care of his penis. Um <laughs> I don't really understand what's going on here, but Comes I can tell you. Bartics. I can show you it here. Look, it's the gentleman's willy care kit. Can I have a closer look at that? Yeah, I'm going to read out some of the items that are included. Very nice. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Want to see this, Dan? A yeah. willy care kit <laughs> over here. Whoa! Just it's quite. Look. It's quite fancy, isn't it? Yeah, oh, look I mean, at it's that. not. I mean, it's only twelve quid. But, okay. Right. Yeah. You're gonna. But my favourite part of it is the jewellery. Yes. <laughs> it comes with uh, an evening wear, as it says. There's a sprucing mirror. There is styling shears, and what the hell is that up there? A fluffing brush. A fluffing brush. A fluffing brush. Oh, well, you've got to keep those, uh, the bush nice and... Well, this uh, this says, cause, yeah, when, this is the kind of secret Santa shit that you get, isn't it? Yes. From work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At work. If you're a man, you're going to get something to do with your willy, a girl, something to do with boobs or something. It's all very sexually inappropriate. Yes. Uh, it does say here, every modern gentleman needs to make sure he spends as much time on the upkeep of his crown jewels as the rest of his fine self. Oh, if the man in your life has let things down, their side, they've used the wrong there, that's really frightened oh, me off, uh, in recent months, then one of our willy care kits is the perfect way to get him back on track. This is very passive-aggressive, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it should be enough of a hint that he needs to up his game and stop letting the team down below the waist. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that gets a bit serious after that. I'm not going to yeah. go into that. But um, yeah, if you um, if you think you need one of these, I mean, there's a lot of five-star reviews on it. One guy's only given it four-star review. I mean, he says... The, it's an ideal bit of fun, which is appropriate to price with different packaging. Delivery was swift. <laughs> <laughs> why Delivery. has it got four stars? I, I want to know why there's a star missing. Surely it would be like, cut my dick. Or the, the <laughs> jewelry. a good one star for me. The evening wear was too loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was not adjustable in but, size. <laughs> the cock ring was not adjustable in size. The other thing I um, found online, which I thought was quite interesting, oh, was yes. a uh, gift of nothing. Is it just we know when they say the thought counts. It is a sphere of nothing. Oh, okay. Well, that's a little bit like... Um, do you give that to someone as a joke or do you give that to someone you hate? You give that to someone as a joke, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You give someone... What you do is you poo on a mirror and then put that <laughs> <laughs> Wrap that up to someone you hate. <laughs> you could use this small sphere to, you know, package some poop. Could do. Send it to someone. Well, that's like um, Marvel Comics, sort of way back when, when uh, Stan Lee was sort of in his prime. Um, people who believers. people who sort of wrote in and uh, pointed out errors and whatnot in the comic, because Stan Lee was kind of at one point pretty much single handedly sort of editing, writing everything in Mar- at Marvel Comics. So things were just getting so confused, and you know people's names would change. Like he tried to make them easy to remember, like Peter Parker or Sue Storm, uh, and he would just forget what he'd named people and all these things. And so people would write in and, you know, so point out errors. And, Correction directions. Yeah. Um, and he started this thing called the, I think it was called the Marvel No Prize Club. Yeah. Or something like that. So he, he'd send send them a no prize. They, he would award them a no prize. It was nothing. Which was an empty envelope. Yeah. yeah. I think I've heard this before on a podcast yeah. at some point. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. That's quite clever. Uh, it does say here that the uh, what do you buy the person that has it all? Nothing. A gift of nothing, of course. Uh, at least I won't have one already. There's no chance of them hating you for it because there's nothing to hate. Well, that's fair enough. That is true. Yeah. It says at least it's a very s- philosophical gift, actually. Yeah. And there's a lot of five star reviews again. Was delivery swift? <laughs> <laughs> it genuinely says, I relieved this parcel in quick timing. Okay. Well, well as, soon as, as soon as you guys have done a couple of uh, products, I mean, I, I also have some products here. I mean, 
I'm, I'm not going to go too far into them, but you know, picking up on your um, affinity for beards, there's a top beards card game, which is just top trumps for beards. All oh, right, okay. Bearded people. So what surely the mean? biggest bearded wins, right? Well, you've got to take into account curliness, heft, width, color, color. Um, so I thought we'd I'd, I'd just go away from this. Um, there's a, a convenience uh, chain store chain in the UK um, who have revealed um, the the most bought items on Christmas Eve. Go on. Right. Okay. Uh, this is yeah. interesting. I'd like to hear this. So these, these I have on a few occasions been at Blue Water on Christmas Eve. Uh, running around these are, these as are they're shutting. From sort of like a groceries point of view. Okay. Yeah. So um Sprouts? Gravy. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting. Um top selling items on Christmas Eve. Johnny's. Um best selling wine. I guess you could you could take a little guess at uh what these are gonna be. Best selling wine. Uh champagne. That's no. Uh, Pinot Grigio. Port. Shut and left the pat. All of these things are not wines. <laughs> Pinot, Pinot Grigio. Grigio. Pinot Grigio is a, a boat, port and champagne. Both not wine. No, no. Types of wine. Both historically not wine. Types of wine. Port is port. Port's fortified wine. Yeah. Fortified I thought wine. I thought port was wine, but I know nothing about alcohol, so. No. Uh, Chateau Neuf de Pap. Chateau Neuf de Pap. Which, actually, I've tried. I, 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 I is that paid, Christmassy? I suppose so. It's yeah, just a, it's a cinnamon it's in there. Just a ludicrously overpriced wine. Yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna mm. go on record or say that it ain't it's got a ludicrous price. name. Uh, best selling sparkling wine, <laughs> champagne, no, prosecco. vodka, a oh, prosecco now is yeah. it? Um, best selling party food item, um, very British one. This pigs is. in blankets, no. Ah, ah, uh, pork pies, no. Ah, oh. chicken satay assortment. Obviously. Oh, everyone does love that's a good not, chicken that's satay. That's not very British. Best selling non food item, Johnny's, no. Uh, batteries yeah oh yeah. yeah for the kids toys yeah, yeah i'm nice. sure best selling fruit bananas nope is a sprout fruit no it's a nope. vegetable <laughs> okay it's a veg wasn't sure um apples nope it's lemons gotta be for gotta be for nan's g and t isn't it ah uh, lemons oh, really? yeah of course yeah for the drinks best selling vegetable this one's quite an obvious one sprouts no Potato spuds. Think about what what you know when when you're a kid, like what your what your parents must have had to go out to buy on Christmas Eve. Is it a last minute vegetable, like a very Wait, perishable something, vegetable? Something you, something you just go and buy one of, really. Carrot. Oh, oh, do the yeah. fake Rudolph, isn't it? Cool, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. yes, that makes sense. Yeah. See, I wasn't thinking straight. No, I wasn't thinking of that. No, don't have any kids, so yeah. But they, Lucky us. <laughs> they they go on to uh to, to give whole 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 rundowns on things, but um which gets a bit boring. Did but, you bring up Sainsbury's and get this? Did you? Or? No, no. Oh. I, as I said, it was it was published in an, an article about um a, it was pu- data published by a very popular convenience store chain in the UK. What does it rhyme with? Blow up. <laughs> 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 Which is incidentally the name of the company <laughs> that I went to to poo on a mirror. <laughs> they used a similar font. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that that was my. I just thought I'd take a little break from that. And uh, if you want to go back to the products, here's a couple of really good ones: a French fry car holder. What the hell? What's is that? that? Can I see it? Well, I think it's a. I think it's a very poorly worded um, name because it sounds it's like a fucking cup holder with some French fries. When stuff it says in it. when it says French fry French fry car holder, it makes it sound like the French fries are holding the car, like it's a giant. <laughs> so like, it's a car. It's an in-car French fry holder. Yes, it, yeah. it seems that like you. Yes, like a cup holder, but for your French fries. I see we've been using the same website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine so. Here's, here's, I'm just they're just my kind of um, top picks for there. Um, most of them I thought were quite rubbish, um, though the one that caught my eye was the underground beer fridge for £199. How does that work? Underground? Underground. So you dig a hole in the ground and it like you, it pulls up out of the ground and then you put it down there. Is and the it ground keeps, particularly keeps cool, is it? Well, yeah, it's the ground. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. yeah. The ground is cold, is it? As you go underground, it's very moist and very cool. cool. Yeah, yes. so. we said it was cold enough for beer. Ever, ever dug a hole in the summer, Ross? No. Yeah, it's a good way to cool down. Yeah. You've never been on the beach and dug a big hole and got in it? 
Yeah, I guess that's kind of cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool in there, isn't it? Yeah. Over time, it's going to cool it down, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought it was cold enough for a beer, though. Well, you know, you don't want beer freezing. You want it. No. Cool. Unless mm. you're an American, you know, with okay. your light beers. Light beers are best absolutely freezing, so you don't mm. have to taste them. Yeah. It freezes your taste buds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's my. And it, you guys uh, got any more? Yes. I've got. Um, in the tradition of previous Christmases, yeah, go on. Um, remember when we did our Quizmas special? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was might, our first Christmas. I might have to be about to filter one, another one of my articles out here. I've got the uh, thirty-five bizarrest Christmas traditions. Uh, okay, I've got seven. So I'm uh, not gonna. Let, I'm not gonna do all thirty-five. Let's go with your. Let's go with your thirty-five, and I'll count my seven out. Yeah. Okay. So number one, there's a festive South African. Delicacy on Christmas Day, locals tuck into deep fried caterpillars of the emperor's of the emperor moth. Okay, yeah. Number where, two, where that, sorry, in uh, South Africa. Okay, I've got yeah, I've got um, fried worms in South Africa as well. Right. I wonder if any of our. I imagine but all worm of these is are a larva of a moth, isn't it? Is it the same thing? Well, caterpillar, no. Caterpillar, sorry. Oh, yeah. How funny! In, in Austria. I think we all know this one. Austrian children live in fear of the Krampus. Oh, yes. Krampus. A Christmas devil who's said to beat naughty children with branches. <laughs> and this is, one we, uh, this is one we did in our Christmas special. Um, in Catalonia, they include the figure of the Kagana in their nativity scenes. It's a small figure of a fella with his breeches down taking a shit. On I've a heard about this. On a mirror. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've heard about this. And also, in number four. Yeah, you heard about it when we did it two years ago. <laughs> Is that what it was? It was yeah. in the Christmas special. Oh, Christmas special. But I didn't find out this at the time. At number four, Catalonians also have the Tio de Nadal, otherwise known as the pooping log. <laughs> Decorated yeah. with a face and blanket on Christmas Eve, the log is placed halfway into a fire and beaten with sticks. Well, hold on. What kind of log is this? <laughs> well, there a you know. Log. A log of poo. No, it's a, a log that's like put a face on it. I imagine it's like the fire's pooping out a log. Oh, right, okay. With a face on it. Why are they beating it? They're, I don't know why they're beating it. This is literally just a list. <laughs> <laughs> I want answers, dog. And number five, in Norway, there's no cleaning on Christmas Eve. All brooms are safely hidden away in case they're stolen by witches or evil spirits. Are witches known for going out on Christmas Eve? Well, they like their brooms. Yeah. I thought that was more of a Halloween thing. I don't know. Maybe in Norway, every day is Halloween. It's pretty dark and cold up yeah, there. Yeah, well, you know, they, that's where all the black metal comes from. Mm. At Japan, number six. This is going to um, be weird, right? Advertising <laughs> can be incredibly powerful. Thanks to a campaign in 1974, many Japanese families eat at KFC on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Mm. This is one I knew about. Yeah, I, I, think, I think a lot of people yeah. know about this. Yeah, it's quite popular over there to go to KFC. That was a hell of an advertising campaign, wasn't it? Yeah. To get them to associate KFC with Christmas. In Venezuela, Venezuelans attend mass in the run-up to Christmas. However, Caracas residents have developed a strange tradition. They journey to mass on roller skates. Well, I think everyone should do that. It should yes. be a rule. Jesus did it on skates, so you've got to... We went... <laughs> We went, um, we went ice skating in London when we went for our magic, when my girlfriend and I went for our Christmas trip to London. We went yeah. ice skating. I haven't been ice skating in years. No, Ooh. certainly not as firm on my feet as I used to be. Maybe you're more top heavy now. Then I think your, head, probably, your head I think and your I'm, hair has got bigger. I think it, what it is, it's more that I'm just a bit less fearless these yeah. days. Because when you fall, it actually hurts now. Yeah, yeah. I was very conscious of falling. Yeah, when you were younger, you used to bounce. I did try to to skate around. Sort of try to convince Did, myself that I don't care if I fall over. But. I used to go to Romford Ice Rink uh, a lot, probably twice a week, probably every Saturday, Sunday. Um, never used to really skate much, just hang out there and drink those Coke. But when you fell, there was always that rumour you had to put your hands in so no one sliced your fingers off. Do you still do, you do that? Because I'm still scared. If I fall over on ice, I still tuck my hands in. Oh, they didn't, didn't say that. No, because people lose their fingers. Well, that's terrifying. Well, it's, it's yeah. funny because a, a couple of years ago, um, we went to watch some ice hockey. It was my first time ever watching live ice hockey. Great, and I it? enjoyed it mm. so much that mm. I kind of like was, was trying to convince myself that I should start trying to go and play ice hockey. 
Friend of but the show does a lot of ice hockey, doesn't he? Yeah, Ali. Ali oh, yeah. He's a goalie. He plays, oh yeah, no, goalie, I have yeah. seen yeah. that actually. Yeah. In actual fact, fact, I think I've got a feeling he plays with um, JJ that I used to be in a band with. He's the Kent Knights, aren't they? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I should yeah. hit them up. Maybe I should hit them up for some yeah. uh, for some tips. Yeah. I'd love. Get I would involved. love to play ice hockey. Yeah. Because you know, I, there's nothing. Fuck a sport. There's nothing I love more than winning and fighting. <laughs> yeah. When I was younger, ice hockey was my thing. I was well into it. Yeah. Yeah, I was a Pittsburgh mm. Penguins fan. Okay. Yeah. I'm a Flyers why. fan. I'm a Philadelphia yeah. Flyers fan. Okay. There you oh, go. Maybe, I should, maybe I'll start my journey then. I'm just going to pick out one more because I'm not going to read go all 35. I can't, I can't cheer you on. In Germany, they hide a pickle in the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. The first child to discover it in the morning receives a small gift. It's a pickle. Is it a pickle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I imagine it's the pickle in more thrifty households. Yeah. Why you have a perfectly good pickle there? Stellar German accent there. Yes. As I said, my... Uh... Oh, I think we've got the same article because I've just seen a picture. Five weird Christmas foods from around the world from yeah, a, a reputable one. source. I'll let you read it. No, no, it's fine. No, I, I've done the, the interesting one. The rest of them were a bit rubbish. What? What about roasted sheep head? Oh, I didn't, maybe I didn't see In that. Norway. They eat roasted sheep head. Yes. Also known as Smalahov. It's normal quite a centrepiece for a Nordic Sunday dinner, especially right before Christmas. Does it look like something out of Indiana Jones? It oh, pretty much does. Hell. Yeah. That is like all grim, brown and shit. Well, brains are supposed to be quite tasty, aren't they? Yes. They call it... There's a specific word for it, isn't there? Would you oh, eat them? Remember. Someone offered them up to you now. Sweet you eat brains. Brain? Yeah. Sweet yeah, breads, isn't it? I don't know. Or is that I, Balls. Say what I ate uh, a couple of years ago in London, a chicken heart. I don't think that's as bad as brains for some reason. Ah, uh, chicken heart. I've eaten, I've, uh, I'll tell you what is good, lamb heart, stuffed lamb heart. I had a skewer of chicken hearts. Mm, very nice. I've eaten haggis. That was all right. Oh, I like haggis. Yeah. I don't think I've ever eaten haggis. It's like spicy stuffing, isn't it, almost? Pretty much. Yeah. Nice. In a sausage. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, eat, I'd, eat, I'd eat lamb, uh, sheep's brain. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I could do brain. I don't know why. It just weirds me out. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'd start to get their thoughts. What, yeah, like in Eye Zombie. Surely that would help, wouldn't it? Why having sheep thoughts? Like, no, your just, enemy. <laughs> start to think about eating grass all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you'd get some sort of placid, peaceful moment. Yeah. Where you'd just be like blank minded like a sheep just for the rest of the day. How glorious would that be? I can just be? imagine. You remember the film Black Sheep? No. The people turn into sheep? No. That sounds, You've not like seen a, it. that sounds like a, a C movie. It is, yes. Um, a C movie? Yeah. <laughs> it's not even good enough to be a B it's, movie. I, is it a New Zealand film? Yeah, it is. And it's got their humour, which I really enjoy, which is, is really fucking... Was it designed to promote New Zealand lamb? lamb. You should watch it. It's fucking great. It's, is it it's good? It's called Black Sheep. Yeah, it's, it's like a zombie film, but with sheep. The sheep are like the zombies. Well, there's more. There's this famous thing. It's like Wales, isn't it? There's more sheep in New Zealand than there are people. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, like in Wales, there's supposed to be more sheep than people. Wow. It's a fucking great film. It's uh, real tongue-in-cheek, really silly in right, places, okay. but it's got that real dry New Zealand humour, which I really enjoy. And where can I find it? I don't know. Some of your local streaming facilities, I'm sure, will have it. Oh, okay. It was fairly popular. Hmm. Yeah. Do you know I watched for the second time the other night? And I just absolutely brings me so much joy, and I'm not entirely sure why. Men Moana. Pooping, men pooping I've on never seen Moana. Street. Moana. Have you seen Moana? Yes. I've not I seen Moana. I absolutely love it. That got The Rock yeah. in it? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. The Rock, yeah. It's, it's a film released pre-2005, Ross. Of course, it's got The Rock in it. No, yeah. it's really... He's in uh, everything post, now. Post, so I mean, post-2005. Yeah. Post yeah. It's got The Rock in it, yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. The Rock can't sing for shit, but he just got a song in it. And yeah. it, you can really tell Can you the smell what he's cooking? It. You, you can smell what he's cooking and it's pretty shitty. But the thing is, at least he gave it a go and didn't try and auto-tune himself. No. Yeah, he's no jabroni. He's no jabroni. At the end it's of true. the day, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, I, just, I just like it. It's very bright. It's got yeah. that similar sort of like depth and vividness of colour that Finding Nemo does. No, and that, no, that okay. is always a bit of a feast the for my sea. eyes. The sea in my eyes. The sea. It's fantastic. Yeah. The way they've animated it. Yeah. It's really good. Oh, I'm watch this when I get home. I'd recommend it's it. Right. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was all right. Yeah. Maddie's recently, uh, finally, uh, after we said that we, we needed to watch it for, you know, probably five years now, um, 
Maddie has been in installments watching Frozen. Okay, um, it's okay. I thought it was. I thought I've, I've been okay. seeing bit, bits of it. I've just I've been a bit bored. It's not it's the well, smash I think, hit that I think. Do you know what? No, but is. it's a smash hit with little kids. It is a little kids film. Yeah. So is Moana. Yeah, but Moana it just works better for me. But for me, Tangled was the one. Oh, I like. I fucking Tangled. love Tangled. I like. Tangled. Oh, I still haven't seen Tangled. Give Tangled is small. I like. I like the little thing. The little lizard. His little chameleon. Little, yeah, little chameleon on her shoulder. Yeah, I like Tangled. That. Tangled's good, but Tangled's got a lot of sort of humour that only sort of older people would get in it. Yeah. Like a classic okay. Pixar, you know? Right, yeah. Like the the guy with the horse, he's hilarious. The horse is hilarious. Yeah, the horse is the best thing about that film. Yeah. The retarded chicken's the best thing about Moana. The retarded chicken. There's a retarded chicken. Oh, I'm going to watch this when I go home. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's a good it's a good Disney movie and I haven't seen many good Disney movies in a long time. Would you agree with that? Um, what's the last good Disney movie I Wreck saw? Wreck-It Ralph. My girlfriend won't watch them. She does. She doesn't watch kids' films. No, any of that stuff. No, I've I've told her how good um, Lego Movie is. She doesn't want to watch it. So she's kids. dead inside. She, she is. I mean, the Lego Movie no, is one of the the best films. She ever. has no whimsy. Is no, what you're saying? That, exists, oh, that pretty much describes her. That will be what's on her tombstone. Well, I'm full of whimsy. That's all I am is whimsy. You Matilda, whimsyless. You know whimsy. what might help. <laughs> Three Christmas ghosts visited her <laughs> oh, maybe, after amazing. the podcast tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Christmas. What would you be? The ghost of Christmas. Uh, I think I would be the ghost of Christmas. Um, I don't know. I suppose Ross would have to be the ghost of Christmas past. Yes. Uh, because um, you've been around her for for five six many years, years. Right. i think dom you would have to be the ghost of christmas present because he is traditionally a bearded jolly jolly portly fellow. fellow is he isn't the ghost of christmas future generally like a, a anorexic ghost or something yes. yeah stan <laughs> yes. a pale anorexic ghost <laughs> but you, but anemic you, but you couldn't be the ghost of christmas future could you because obviously if i'm going to paint a bleak future for matilda you would need to be dead yes so you couldn't make yourself, you couldn't talk you couldn't, about yourself yeah, being you dead. Talk, yeah, you couldn't sort of, yeah. Yeah. You have to show her my tombstone, wouldn't you? And I'd be the ghost of Christmas present because I'd be like, oh, look how great it is. Christmas, how whimsical. Look at all the family. Watch watch this wonderful life. Maybe not because that's depressing. Look at, Dan, imagine look her, at, like look at Dan and Ross sitting at home by themselves while everyone else jovially enjoys Christmas down the pub at karaoke night. I'll get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Um, <laughs> I'm tiny. Tiny dab. Tiny dab. She's <laughs> in her home. All bell nourished. That's why you're being a ghost Christmas future. <laughs> God bless us. God bless us. <laughs> <laughs> Choking on his vape. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got one liquid for Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> Oh dear! Get him a goose-fatted turkey. <laughs> Flavor. What is vape. today, boy? <laughs> Bye, sir. <laughs> Sorry, it's menthol. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas. Oh. <sighs> Not that I can tell that it's Christmas from your lack of Christmas jumpers. You didn't say oh. anything about Christmas jumpers. Oh, it was the implication. <laughs> I'm wearing my "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" T-shirt. That's, that's joy of all seasons. See, the thing is, it's not Christmas for me yet because my birthday's on Wednesday. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's not really Christmas until after my birthday. Otherwise, I'm lucky enough to be exactly six months away. That is nice. We, to a day. I'm 24th of June. It's the Christmas, obviously, 25th Both December. of us have got uh, birthdays close to Christmas, haven't we? Mm. Mine is almost exactly two weeks after Christmas. Yours is mine is five days before. Yeah. It's got to suck, man. I've got to say, the, 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 extra, the extra nine or so days... Don't help. <laughs> no, there's no that no one. I, I, I feel like after's better though. Surely you don't get as many combined gifts when it's after. Yeah, well, you, you, do you, as when don't, it's before. you don't. Yeah, but I've always leveraged that for some good shit. Over you the don't. Years. You yeah. don't get many combined gifts, but you don't get many gifts at all because people give the gifts for Christmas. So yeah. it's mostly everyone's just broke just by the time your birthday just comes just Small gifts. Yeah. So it's yeah. lots of gifts. and everyone's and depressed money. in January, aren't they? Yeah, me included. Yeah. Most depressing time older. of the year. We're going to be 28. 29. 29. I'm 29 on Wednesday. Oh, We're 30. I'm 30 next 30 year. 30 next year. 
I'm 35 year next year. After, 30, 30 the year after. Yeah. 35 next year. <sighs> Imagine that. 30 fucking five. I never oh. thought I'd ever see it. You're closer to 40 than you are 20. Not yet, I'm not. Whoa. You definitely are. Oh, no, yeah, that. So I thought, you, <laughs> thought he was going for the 30 and 40 thing. Well, you've Sorry. That. Yeah, you'd be yeah. closer to 40 than you would be 30. Yeah. In a way. Because <sighs> you'd be in your 36th year. Yep. Jesus. Jesus. Well, if, you, uh, if, if you're looking for a way that to not make it to uh, 35, Go on. Uh, I can read you this Australian study, which is... Uh, which, is highlighting the, the the ways that most people injure themselves over the Christmas period. Oh, can I try and guess some? Yeah, go on. Is it tarantulas? Is it drunken fools? So I, I, I'll tell you this, right? This is uh, according to the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission, right? And I can tell you that there was... This were is from four- Australia? Yeah, it's an Australian article. Oh, sorry, and it's right. United States. Uh, in, fact, it's a, in fact, it's an Australian study published in, a, in an article from New Zealand about a study in the United States. And we're in the UK, yeah? And we are in the UK. Okay. okay. So there were 407, Transcontinental. 407 Christmas-related admissions to health centres and emergency departments in December 2016, according to the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission. Swallowed Lego. Of the, eight, uh, of the 407 admissions. Yes. Right, we're going to... Got to be a lot of cooking injuries, right? 30% are toy-related. Cooking injuries, fires. Cooking of, injuries, burns. Well, the yeah, most... Candles. Most... Of them, it's eighty. Um, sorry, one hundred and fifty-nine were caused by Christmas decorations. So I can imagine that's trips, but yes. trying to put them up and falling off ladders and spiky like that. spikiness in the eyes. Yeah, if eighty-four got- were caused by Christmas lights. Forty were caused by Christmas trees. Yeah, and all their supports. Um. Ten percent of those admitted were younger than two years old, so it's it's kids that have you know. That's less than ten percent, though. Not the Christmas tree. Ten percent mm. of those admitted were younger than two years. Yeah. Uh, in fact, children aged ten and under accounted for a quarter of all admissions. So it's it's, it's us it's, adults that are really the a, problem. It's a lot a lot of um, you know, kids who are probably trying to you know jump up and grab Christmas decorations or grab yeah. hold of the tree mm. and things like that. But it does imply that nearly what. 60 odd percent of it is adults being stupid, right? Um, yes. Well, I can, I can tell you, well, do you, do you want the, the, the cuts, uh, inhalation of foreign objects, sprains and strains and scratches accounted for the most part of them. So, right. so it's, it's Christmas decoration, erection injuries, I can imagine. Mm. Uh, and yes, you're right. Probably Lego swallowing and things like that or like little missiles firing from like a cannon on a toy yeah well here are some of the more notable cases which is where this re- this article really pays off right <laughs> a 36 year old man was putting up christmas decorations when he looked up to sneeze and accidentally swallowed a drawing pin <laughs> <laughs> how does one do that it's only two years fell out away. the wall or something uh, yeah, too close to home with him being 36 <laughs> yeah yeah uh, a four-year-old girl was found with a metal ball in her, a uh, metal bell in her ear. Uh, she was trying to hear jingle bells. <laughs> I imagine she could for the rest of the time. Mm. A fifty-year-old woman who had been standing on a chair hanging Christmas lights fell and struck her rectum on the tree branches. Why, why did oh. I make my legs go? She she made my legs go really weird with a tear. Oh no, that's gone proper five p now. Yeah, my legs went all, all like weak when you. As soon as you said fell on her rectum, they really went. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> well, could but be Ross get, knows about falling on one's rectum. Could be getting worse here. A twenty old, twenty eight year old woman was putting up an ornament when, right. the bar, when the bar stool slipped from underneath her, causing vaginal trauma from the oh. landing. Do we do we think these are real? Do we vaginal think they've gone trauma. and said gone in a study? I've 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 got vaginal trauma. I fell off of a stool. Do you not think maybe she was trying to stuff an ornament in well, there? Well, I've got or a feeling and... that it wasn't. Like, but you know, there was no turkey stuffing involved. I think it was probably a catastrophic trauma to the vaginal yeah. vaginal area from oh, a sexual misencounter or that vaginal oh, area, the vaginal area. The old yeah. classic. Okay. I've slipped vaginal. and fell onto something and Bagging destroyed my up. anus. Is, yeah. <laughs> slipped off something and now my anus is gaping like a wound <laughs> See, I've got a light bulb stuck up there for some reason I was putting up light bulbs and I just fell off the box a 66 year old man working at home to put up Christmas decorations when the wind blew the patient around and around I assume on the chair that he was standing on which oh, right. made him dizzy 
And he was admitted to the hospital for that. For dizziness? Yes. A 64-year-old woman dropped a four-foot wooden Santa on her foot. (laughs) 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 Very specific. A four-foot wooden Santa. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. It must be fun being a doctor sometimes. Well, I can imagine, though, that we could probably... um, I've been been gearing up to my favourite article that I found, by the Mm. way, uh, which I, I was really trying to hope I would leave till last. Um, but now that we're on the injuries, um, I think that we could probably increase those statistics um, because this article, uh, one of the gifts which it suggests on here, is a flamethrower. A flamethrowing gift? No, it is a flamethrower. Yeah. A flamethrower. As in a, a canister, a a canister you put on your back and you point it at someone that you want deaded. Okay. Not just for clearing the leaves. Have you got a picture? Uh, yes, uh, just to let you know, it is, it is legal to purchase fl- flamethrowers under fed- federal law in the United okay. States. There is the gentleman using... He said, is having an actual, fun. An flame, actual flamethrower. flamethrower. And he's, bought, he's, he's, he's uh, burning some sort of Christmas diorama. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, nothing says the festive season like hellfire. Well, this, this, this flamethrower is... Uh, if you, you know, we're looking at your reviews from earlier on. This is, this is 12 customer reviews. Rated five stars out of five. Well, who's not going to rate five stars on a flamethrower? It is. I'll read you this. It's called the X15 flamethrower. It's um, it's fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, well, one thousand five hundred ninety nine dollars to one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Why is, the why the change in price? Scope. <laughs> the one and only X15 flamethrower now in new colours. Hold <laughs> <laughs> well on. Uh, here is a picture of it. It in, really is another place. Bedazzle right? your enemy with it, a bright fuchsia pink. Here's a picture of it in use. That is That's li- impressive. That is my God. That like, is literally a spear of fire. Like 20 foot of flame. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, you can buy this. Uh, they have expedited shipping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not legal to uh, uh, acquire one under UK law. Um, you don't think? I think I'm, it I'm not sure, but... The- it's probably illegal to use it against another human, but I imagine it's probably legal to buy one. I don't think the, so. the, the other options on this website are the Boring Company Flamethrower, which is $15,000. Whoa. Why is that so much more money? Flamethrower Pyro Package, Standard Flamethrower Pyro Package, the X15, which is the small model. Um, you can get Napalm Mix. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fucking hell. The Boring Company Flamethrower um, is limited edition. Oh, okay, well. You slap that on anything, I'm going to be paying more for it. What? 14 grand more for it? Oh, well. Give me an addition, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just have a, have a little look. I, I, don't, I, I can't see shipping. I can't see the option to ship to the UK. Are but, you actually on the purchase page of the website? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I do really enjoy it. Just accidentally Apple paid for it. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. I would, I would absolutely love that. Dan's on a list. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so uh, I think we name flagged up at Cobra right now. (laughs) I would love to get a flamethrower for Christmas. I mean, I'm not. I mean, one of your fireworks parties would be pretty cool. Well, no, I just like you just sort of set up something, wouldn't you? Like, like, like like the guy in the picture, you'd set up a kind of like a Christmas tree with a load of fake presents and just ah. Yeah, I guess so. Um, Yeah, I don't have any desire to hurt sort of you know animals or other human beings, but definitely you know if I you know get some. I don't know, Theresa May, cut out, cardboard cutout. So I'll set fire to that fucker. It's a good way to start a bonfire night, wouldn't it? Right. Save you some fire lighters. Can you imagine how impressive my firework party would be if I stepped out of my house with a fucking full-on flamethrower? How impressive would it be if we each had one either side and we had a row of fireworks each and we just scorched the ground under them and it would set them all off? Scorch the ground under them and then cross over the streams into an X, yeah. bringing it down onto a bonfire, which erupts into flame. Yes. Meanwhile. So- <laughs> yeah, yeah, meanwhile. <laughs> I pay for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it. We, I would spin it round like Dumbledore. <laughs> In uh, oh. the in the the second to last Harry Potter film, uh, Half Blood Prince. A, What's he spinning around? To last? Well, he he it's when they're um, in the cave, they're trying to find um, one of um, Angela Rippon's Horcruxes. 
rip on! <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, uh, and all the zombies come out of the water. Yeah, and oh, he yeah. like spins around this like flame with his wand, like, and it, it's a really fucking cool scene. And he's I a bit like that. he's like at that moment, and he sort of goes like. <laughs> It's like a, it's like a sort of low budget Gandalf moment, you know. Flame of Idol. It's almost <laughs> like Dumbledore's "You shall not pass." Yeah, it's fucking cool, man. That's a cool scene. It's a, it's a cool scene. I feel it's like, like I got, haven't seen it. I'm sure I've seen like all of the Harry Potter at the end. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's, it, he's spinning around and it's coming out as he's spinning around. So there's just this giant whip conflagration around, up, uh, around him. Yeah, and then yeah. it goes <laughs> and it spreads out for this whole cave, just decimates all of the zombies. We were just trying to. He didn't even singe his beard. No, 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 he didn't. He was wet, so he'd been oh, drinking. Okay. Yes, some heavily. Sort of weird potion. Yeah, yeah. yeah but into a but that one of the small parts of Angela Rippon's soul did uh, was deceased that day. So yes, mm. good news. Uh, have you guys got any more? Because this list is the best list I've ever seen in my life. No, life. go ahead. Go I've ahead. Got yeah. some more because. You know, I, these these are just all my top picks. Vladimir Putin scratching post for your cat. Is it, is it a scratching post shaped like Vladimir Putin? Is yep. it a, is it officially um, what's that called? When licensed. Licensed. I wouldn't be oh, surprised that's if he cool. does because he releases a calendar every year of him shirtless, like fighting bears and stuff. Yeah. Good <laughs> and now it looks, well, it's like a tiny bear <laughs> cat going over and attacking a Vladimir Vladimir Putin. Um. This this also did. Uh, this is where I saw the beard bib. Ah, which is uh, quite cool. the beard bib um, was around maybe last year or the year before, and it was like on, on social media a lot. I saw it. Oh, was the it beard bib? Yeah, it was like the thing that sucks us to the glass. I think a few people sent it to me because I have a beard. <laughs> yeah, that's all they can think. Didn't of. send me the product, no, did they? They just sent me just sent a you meme a of the product. It, yeah. yeah. Um, for the golfing enthusiast, there's the uh, there's the right. <laughs> Practice your pot while you poop kit. <laughs> That's oh. quite cool. Which is one of those kind of little... Um, you need that, Dan. Yeah, I could do that. Is your short game lacking? My short game is rubbish, yeah. Uh, my long and short game are lacking. Can't short, practice My short game's all right. My long game could use a lot of work. Um, you'll be pleased to know uh, if you're... If you're uh, sh- you say your short game's good, but your long game's lacking. Mm. Well, what you should do is uh, burn down all of the trees... With Not the with flamethrower. the X-15 flamethrower, oh. but with the mini wrist-mounted flamethrower. You are fucking joking. Surely like Boba you... Fett. Not kidding you at all, my friend. Oh my God, it's that... like Boba Fett's thing. Not kidding you at all. How much is that? Is uh, there a price? I can tell you. Uh, I've got a feeling that it isn't as impressive as it looks in the photo, because I think I've just seen that it's um, powered by flash paper. Uh, but oh, it's, okay. It's uh, 124.99. Yeah. And uh, so you can dazzle a, people rather than brief, burn them. A brief video of it. Um, here are some people using it. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see this on the podcast. Um, this is just a load of faff. Oh, there we go. It does actually come out quite far, though. Oh, my God. That's pretty cool. That is pretty fucking cool. Um, it does say this is not a toy, uh, but it sure looks like one. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It doesn't have any actual purpose, does it? So that therefore, it's a toy. It says in in the description here though this product is inflammable. Inflammable means flammable, which is oh, for the which is a very peculiar turn of like it's a very peculiar piece of English, isn't it? Yeah, mm. inflammable. Mm. Is that is, is that Simpsons where he does that? The joke about something being inflammable. Yeah, the Doctor, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, Pycastic glass. <laughs> this is a disgusting one. It's a teeth cup. Teeth cup? Yes. Oh, for, oh, well, for dentures? No, no, no. It's a mug, and then around the top of it, it's got teeth. Oh, I don't like that it's at all. Cre- that. It's creepy oh, yeah. as fuck. Don't show fun. Dom, because it's going to freak him out. It's but... creepy as <laughs> Oh, that is weird. Oh, that's making me feel a bit ill. <laughs> no, thank you. That is odd. Well, I mean, I mean to be honest, I'm on an article which, uh, which has got flamethrowers for sale on it, so this is... Uh, it's fantastic. Um. <laughs> I found a few weird objects. You can buy someone <laughs> red. How about in- how about a hot? <laughs> the tooth mug made you feel sick. How about a hand turkey statue? <laughs> oh, that is weird. <laughs> That's odd. Um, just for everyone at home, it is a it's a a, a 
it's a hand, and then the, the thumb is a the turkey's tongue. head, yeah. and then it's got feet coming out the bottom of the hand where your wrist should be. Sorry, Ross, I totally interrupted. Inter- no, 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 not at all. Um, but the hands are like the wings almost, I guess. Yes. It's yeah. freaky. Mm. Um, I found something online um, where you can buy someone some red fox urine, which helps them to turn mouse, uh, mice from their home. If, you, if someone's got right? a mouse problem, you can buy them red fox urine. I bet that fucking stinks because fox piss is vile. It's disgusting. Yeah. There's a few other things like that I found. Glow in a dark toilet roll, which actually is quite useful. That's that is bad. very useful. It's not bad. You, you realise you're rubbing some it, kind of depleted uranium on your anus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> then you have a glow in the dark rectum. One of these I, I saw and I thought of you, Dan, for some reason. I don't know why. Um, shittens. Okay. What? Have you seen this? No. I they are tissue mittens. Wow. For wiping your bum. And you could... That's not a bad idea. And I remember reading one of the comments underneath. I haven't got it saved on here, but it was something like, um, can they be reused? And, they, and the suggestion, the answer was, yes, yeah, so you can tell them inside out and use them again. Oh, <laughs> 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 Uh, what else we got on here? The one that I thought was weird. This was under Christmas gifts and something I was looking at. Um, and it was a goat grazer. So if you're living in an, an area where you don't really want to use your lawnmower because it's too noisy, you can rent a goat. And it's to graze a, your to garden. To graze your garden. And, what a and, very economic yeah. way of... Uh... Goat grazing. And you can, you can buy someone the gift of a goat grazer. Good idea. And they basically just give you a goat for a little while. You feed it for them. I wonder how it much uh, it is to rent the goat for the day compared to how much compared, compared to the cost of a goat. Mm. Well, you think it'd be cheaper to just own a goat? Got Livestock is isn't that, aren't actually that expensive. No, buy a little Billy goat. Yeah, just, just call him Billy, the goat. It's a bit obvious, isn't it? Mm. If I had a goat, I would call him Humphrey. Humphrey the goat. Another thing I didn't really get: a home STD test kit. Well, for one, why you would buy it for anyone, and why would you pay for it when you can get it for free? No idea. Not in America, you don't. Do you not? Well, no. No sure. healthcare is free in America, Ross. No, I guess you have not. to pay something. It's covered under the insurance, right? If you're insured, I don't, I don't know if that well, you might want to make a claim on your insurance. And the final thing that I saw that which I actually would really like for myself was an onion holder. Now I cut an onion in half, and then generally go along. And by the time I get to the end, it's getting a bit slippery and coming apart. It's holding the onion for you so you can slice it properly. That is a good idea. Either that or I'm thing. cutting onions wrong. I've been doing it wrong for years. but uh, Towards the end, I just rock the knife and just Yeah, I just kind of mush it. it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I do. But that's I, how you should do it. But, but, but I, 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 get, I cut it in it. half, you know, stick the two halves down so they don't roll away, away yeah. and, then, and then I cut along them. And by the time I get to the end, it's kind of starting to separate and I end up with these you, big chunks you, of onions. Um, are you dicing or are you slicing? Slicing. Slicing, yeah. More like, like fajitas and things like yeah. that. Slicing days. They're long pieces. That is a pain. Yeah, because yeah, by the time you get to the end, you end up with these big pieces of onion. But, um, what you can do is you can not slice all the way to the end. Which is right away. No, and then, so you've got like a tiny little, you know, a couple, few millimetres not cut, and then at the end you just slice that end bit. The other way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Scald. There you go. I don't do that though. I've got non-slip fingers. It's not. It's <laughs> not the fingers that slip. It's the onion yeah, starts to no, separate. It's, 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 it does separate out. Yeah, it's a pain in the arse. The layers. The layers. The layers separate. Well, uh, I'll give you my. Uh, this is only going to get better, by the way. Okay. So I'll give you the last two, and then if there's anything else, we can just wrap up. Mm. Um, this is a a, um, a potty texter. A potty texter. A potty yeah. texter. You sit there, you can enjoy a glass of wine and text that while you're having a poo. Basically a tripod for a camera with a different mount on it top, is isn't it? exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. But this is, all, this is all about the journey. And, uh, <laughs> and what we're really getting to is the balls deep fishing tackle. What is that? <laughs> Do you put your balls deep in I'll tell you tanks? what they are, my friend. It's, uh, you know, you have like a, uh, the little float thing on you when you go fishing. Yeah. Yes. A little fish. Uh, this is shaped like a pair of balls, right? So that it looks, so it appears as though you're teabagging the fish when you've caught the fish. Ah, uh, I'm. Uh, oh, as so it you hangs know, down. As you know, I'm a recent convert to carp fishing. Did it a lot when I was younger. Fishing. Oh my god. I well, see. yeah. Dom Dom started going fishing a couple of years Course ago. Of course, fishing. He said, said he was going to invite me, but then uh, Your phone never rang. I haven't been this rings. year. I haven't been this year. Course fishing. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, Rod or uh, yeah. Pole? Uh, 
Rod. Rod. Yeah, I used to do a bit of pole fishing back two in the day. Rod, two rods on me, rod rest with the arms. Yeah. I've got a One on me top, one on bottom. With a 16-pound carp that I caught once. I mean, it's very young. I had my, my Pittsburgh Penguins hat on, actually, when I was in the pack photo. My PB is a 20-pound carp. Wow, that's good. Mm, there's much bigger out there. Yeah. But yeah. It's just in Devizes in Wiltshire. Caught this one. Yeah. Is that what it's called? In Devizes? Yeah. I mm. thought it was like Devizes or something. Devizes. Devizes. Devizes, Wiltshire. Yeah, Devizes. 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 It's start? like Sirenster, isn't it? I can never really. Is it Sirencester? Yeah, I never. I, or is it Sirencester? Well, we when we went. I thought it was there, Sirenster. When was it we went, when we, <laughs> when we went there because it's got yeah. the sister at the end of it, and you know places like Gloucester have got the sister at the end. We assumed it was Sirenster, but then everyone there seemed to call it um, Sirencester. Sirencester. Okay, I've seen it a lot. I just don't never it's know. Near how to Oxford, say it. isn't it? It's in, um, it was on the way to Cheltenham, wasn't it? Surrey. Yeah, it's near Bicester. Surrey? Like. No, it's much further along than that. No, it's near Gloucester. Mm. That's where it is. Dr. Foster. Yeah. He that's, went to Gloucester. Sorry, that's, that's where we, uh, we, we were when, I, when, I, when we saw Siren Sester. There you go. Siren Yeah. Siren. Whenever I drive past the sign for it, I always spend 20 minutes trying to figure out how to say well, it. We, yeah, we, <laughs> as I say, we did. And we just sort of using logic, the logic that Gloucester is said Gloucester. Yeah. You know the English language doesn't work like that. Right? No. Yeah, that's very true. It's always best to ask a local. Ask a local. I use um, like Cholok. I, I said Chalok for a long time. Some people it's, do cause say Because it's, ch- it's spelled Chalok, but apparently the locals Some call it Cholok. Do, do they? I call it Chalok. Yeah, some people Cholok. do call it Chalok, but it is Ch- but yeah. uh, local. Well, some people call it Cholok and some people call it Chalok. When I was doing the travel news, I um, had people ring me because I was calling it Chalak to correct me. So it was Cholak. Oh, that sounds like a load of old crop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you guys got anything more? Because uh, uh, no, I, no, I, no, I, I am just fresh smashed. out of hot shit that you can buy for this year. <laughs> no. I'm fresh out of hot shit you can buy for this year. I did have a thing on funny looking Christmas trees, but actually they weren't that funny looking. They were just like made out of fruit and stuff. Doesn't like that. really work on a no, on a, and I thought it didn't really work on audible a, medium. On a, yeah, on a non-visual medium. Well, we've done over an hour, so have we? Yeah. Well, that's Jesus. A, that's a merry Christmas for everyone. That's it, the longest one we've done in a long time. Yeah. Well, that's there, our, that's there are hot picks for this year. Literally, in some cases. Unfortunately, you'll hear this on Thursday when it's too late to order any of these things online. No, I bet you could expedite some delivery for uh, the X15 flamethrower. Or yeah. if you're really lucky, the, uh, what was it called? Boring, Fox Piss. Boring, boring Company. Boring Company. $15,000. If you had that much money spare, though, you probably would. You could order your own fucking airstrike, <laughs> I'm sure. You could hire the military for a little while for that, couldn't yeah. you? I would love to aim a, I, I would love to aim, I would love to own a flamethrower. More than an RPG? Yeah. Really? I think I'd rather have a rocket. Yeah, the thing is with an RPG, though, if you get it slightly wrong, you're fucked. Whereas with a... Flamethrower, it's in front of you, isn't flame it? Flamethrower, yeah. it sort of only goes out, what, like, I don't know, 30, 40 feet. Yeah, I mean, that, that one looked like it was going about maybe 20, 20 feet. In yeah. Front of the guy. Whereas mm. with an RPG, you misaim that shit, it's fucking hitting... Straight into a school. It's going straight into a <laughs> fucking school or something, yeah. <laughs> And the one, number one most obscure Christmas entry this year was uh, Terence Digby was uh, dressing his Christmas tree when an RPG landed on his house, <laughs> levelling the building. Yeah. <coughs> and his son, Tidy Tim. Who only had one vape liquid for Christmas. Yeah. It was cranberry, also cranberry flavoured. He was also pooping on a mirror at the time. <laughs> Wait a minute, am I just becoming Tidy Tim here? Yeah. That's it. That's our, that, that is the Civic Sticks Guide to Christmas 2017. Uh, we'll be back, I guess, in the new year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, unless we find time to do anything in between. Um, oh, yes. Quick announcement. Uh, in the new year, I'm going to be away for a little while, starting a new job. And... Uh, so I'm um, just figuring out what I can do with the podcast and what I can't do with the podcast. And then hopefully I'll be back at some point 
um, at the end of January or maybe the beginning of February or something like that. And until then, we're going to bring back racist Dom. Yeah. No, don't bring back racist Dom. <laughs> well, what I was actually thinking is that we could get Dom's identical twin brother who looks and sounds exactly like him on. Oh, Romanik. Yeah. Horatio. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have, to, we'll have to see what we could do. Uh, well, yeah, but we'll be back in the new year. So from everybody here, have a lovely Christmas. A happy new year. And jingle bells. Something I, like that. Yeah. 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 Well, what, what are our names again? Uh, I am... Oh, we've got a name this one. Oh, no, we're just calling it I am, Christmas. I am Tiny Tim. <laughs> I am the ghost of Christmas portliness. I'm Ross. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas!